That's the best way to start on these stories. Okay. Focus five thoughts, one to one is six. It's a guy that will never forget. It's the first time I fell in love. It's the first time I felt like I could go from my arms. I remember it so clearly. I was big brother, and the photo was incredible. It was so very proud. Growing up with Ned was very special. We shared a village together and watched Friend and Close. The night sounds cliche, but it wasn't just my brother. It truly was my best friend. Although I was eight years older than him, I always grew up to the and he made to go with my life. There was one aspect of this year's, and I think you need to love for Johnny Cash. Ned had the biggest part. He always put on his face and possessed the amazing ability to know exactly how to make someone smile, especially me. Ned could always go to school and turn up on a day to a big one. His attentiveness, coupled with his wit and humour, were a gift for all who were privy to him. The relationship had a fair share of sibling rivalry. Peter became a daily fixture in the household. And the days of that my brother win were short lived. I was ashamed for myself, doing all I could not to be completely humiliated, because I was going to come up prey. Liam was a very intelligent kid, and he picked up things really quickly. I would always claim myself to be the half maths genius, but when Liam came along, we all used to test me on my chance tables, and Liam always used to smuggle and shout out the answer while I was still working it out. He loved to draw. I would often sketch away whilst we sat and watched TV together. He would draw the pictures and leave me and leave them in my room to find. And I always treasure this, and today that act is a priceless reminder of his incredible talent and beautiful kindness. Late September 2010, and things felt very different. Ben wasn't his normal self, and it was clear something was playing on his mind. I sat with him in my room and asked him what was wrong. I tried so desperately to get him to open up to me and tell me why he was so mad. But despite my best efforts, I couldn't get to the bottom of why my normally quiet, yet happy brother seemed to be so out of his former self. I didn't want to push too much as I'm sure he'd come back to me in a few days like he always did. And we were talking through his phone with my friend now, and that would be an opportunity to make him happy. But so I thought. A couple of weeks passed, and Ned still hadn't spoken to me about what was up. That day at work, he was all I could think about, so I skipped him and decided to go straight home and see if he fancied a game of FIFA. I was hoping to cheer him up and ask him to come off his first call up and came back to the French League for his 18th birthday present. I missed my normal left home from work, so I got home a little bit late, and Mum told me that Ned was in the bath. I went upstairs and knocked on the door. There was no answer. I was really out of him, not to answer, but I decided to leave him and assume that he'd be out in no time. More time passed, and then came to the room. I looked again, and after a while, I forced the door open. That night, he had decided that it was his time to leave the house. He was 14. The events in that night were being given me back since my son. But I remember so vividly my desperate attempts to try to save his life. But all that I did. Which will never start breaking from me as she realised that her baby was gone and it happened to make two of the hardest phone calls I might have to make so that my older brother and my dad know that a piece of my heart will always be broken beyond repair. The days, weeks, and months that followed as we all tried to cope with what happened, as I watched out this year as the one of those I loved struggled daily to cope. My parents were living every moment leading up to us finding him. One would have thought I'd have done anything different, but struggling to cope with the feeling of guilt and remorse. The shoulders which once rested my brother up in moments of joy became when my grieving mother and father laid their heads. The family home became a close reminder of what's was and what will never be. All the time, me and my family accepted that we couldn't have done anything to change the fate of him. He had chosen for himself, 